to the deal she says now you'll keep this hamster as long as you take care of it i will not take care of this hamster and the little kids got the hamster and i'm sorry for some of you in here but they named the hamster hamster danny <coughs> and two months later the mother realized that all of a sudden she was taking care of every need of that hamster feeding it ordering changing the bedding and the the chips and everything and she made a couple of phone calls and found a new home for the hamster when the children got home from school she broke the news to them one of the children remarked and said well he's been around here a long time we sure will miss him mom said yep yeah, but he's too much work for one person and since that I am that one person, I say he goes. The other child said, well, maybe if he wouldn't eat so much and wouldn't be so messy, we could keep him. Mom was firm. She said, it's time to take Danny to his new home. And she insisted to children. She said, now go and get his cage. They said, get his cage? We thought you said daddy. <laughs> anyway. Just wanted you to laugh just a little bit this morning. If you would, in obedience to the reading of God's words, please stand as you look at verse 7 of Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of faith. I like calling it the will of God. You, you're in this, you've been left in the will of God. He talks about you. So we have now in verse 7. If you're there, say amen. amen. If you brought your Bible, say amen. amen. If you didn't bring your Bible, say I'm lazy. Mm -hmm, I heard you. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, the Bible says, By faith, everybody say faith. faith. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen yet, say not seen yet, not seen yet. moved with fear. No, don't say that. I'm still reading. You can say it. We can read it together. Is it? <laughs> By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Did you get that? The saving of his house. By the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Father, thank You this morning for faith. Thank You this morning for being our Heavenly Father. Father, may I decrease and your in You increase. Father, I pray this morning that this is Your message and not mine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Smile at someone on the way down. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, we see Noah, which is a very famous story that we probably all know, that started out in, uh, as we say now in, in Sunday school, the pre-K ages, if not even in the nursery. If you notice this morning in the video, they were rocking in that chair. And right behind that chair uh, was Noah's Ark. And uh, you know the story. Uh, God uh, got rid of everything on the earth except for Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wife. And they got into the ark. God's judgment came. And God shut the door to the ark. We, get, we know the rest of the story. We know it. We know it. If you don't, I encourage you to read it. And then we go all the way to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. And if you allow me, God says, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. And that, that fear there means out of reverence. Not fear and trembling like the, the boogeyman or something like that, but out of reverence to God, he moved with fear. In other words, he did what God asked him to do. He was moved with fear. With fear, he prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. I want us to look at verse uh, 7 this morning to get three things real quickly, or as long as it takes. And out of this verse, and out of the story of Noah and the ark and his family in the flood, and the flocks of animals, I want us to look at the danger the dead and the deliverance. Let's look at the danger here. You see, 
the flood, and, and, and I don't believe anybody in here, listen, nobody in here has experienced a flood like the flood Noah experienced. Now, I know for a fact Rhonda and Joey have experienced a flood in their home. Hurricane Floyd, Hurricane Floyd. Anybody in here, ever, anybody else in here ever had a flood in their home? Okay. Uh, Victor. Uh, but in your mind, when I said flood water, though, probably some of you immediately went to Hurricane Matthew where they're still, where they're still cleaning up. Now there's some things about a flood. Yes, the flood that God sent and the floods that He still sends today sometimes by His, by His act, by His hand, by what happens. Yes, they can take lives. But normally, normally we can survive a flood. This flood could not have been uh, survived through, could not have been lived through without the hand of God taking His people, His remnant there, and placing them in the no, in the ark, Noah and his family. And and the, but the devastating thing about a flood is if it doesn't take your life, it takes everything around you, your home, every the the, the picture albums, everything that are, is valuable to you everything you've worked all your life for, and in just about a moment's notice or over minutes or hours at a time as the flood is rising, everything you have is destroyed. Everything you have is gone. And everything that is gone will never be the same again because of the water damage. I want to tell you this morning, there has been a flood going on in this world. There has been a flood going on since that flood even uh, uh, since uh, Christ died on the cross, there has been a flood going on in America. There's been a flood going on in our homes. There's been a flood going on in some of our churches. There's been a flood going on in, uh, in a lot of areas of the world. There's been a the flood going on because Satan has been reigning for over 2,000 years. And I mean reigning. I don't mean R-A-I-N. I-N-G. R-E-I-N. He's been reigning. And fathers, we have a responsibility. Johnny Hunter said that the men, the fathers, the men is the untapped reservoir for the work of God in this, in this time. And I want us to look at how Satan reigns in our life and will flood our life. And fathers, it's time to step up to the plate because the devil has been serious for some time now and church, he is still serious and he is still busy about doing his work. And it's time we put spiritual levies around our lives. We put spiritual levies around our homes. And fathers, we need to put spiritual levies around our spouses. And we need to put spiritual levies around our children. It's time for the men of God to stand up and do their work. Right. We need spiritual levies. Those levies that broke during Hurricane Katrina. I, I studied for this sermon. I studied what exactly, and I don't think less of me, don't judge because it's not right. You're not Jesus. But listen to me. I studied I study, now listen to me, I study exactly, some people call it a dike, some people call it a levy, depending on what it does. A dike and a levy actually does two different things. But I want us to look at the levy this morning. When the levees broke, and I don't know why I'm pointing there, because it's not over there, it may be over there, but down in uh, Louisiana, New Orleans and all that, where the where Hurricane Katrina cut, you know, the levees broke and it just flooded all of that. And I'm sure, I'm sure there's still some people suffering today, not outside of losing lives, but still suffering today with possessions, if you'll allow me, because of Hurricane Katrina. But what a levy does is a levy is built and is put there so that it navigates the water where it needs to be, where it doesn't need to be. And the reason a levy is built so it can allow the agricultural part of that area to grow and to flourish and to... Uh, to um, Oh, I just lost my word. To, um, to, to, to get healthy. To get healthy. And for everything agriculturally, whether it's, it, whether it's shellfish, whether it's fish, whether it's uh, plants, animals, whatever it is, that levee is there to navigate water around that. And you know what? That's what we need today because Satan is reigning and we need fathers. We need to put spiritual levees around our homes and around our families to navigate so we can grow so we can nourish, so we can get the demons and the devils outside of our life, outside of our home, and so we can spiritually grow, get in the Word of God, and know the God of the Word. We need levies this morning in our home because of the floods that are going on. They prevent flooding. Satan is not playing 
Not that he has, but Satan is not playing around anymore, church. Dads, fathers, he's not playing around. And guess what? You know what's closest to me? You know what's closest to me? You want to get my attention? Mess with Bethany. You want to get my attention? You know what you want, Rhonda? Just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> mess with Bethany. And Satan knows that. He will mess with your mind. He will mess with your home. And Chris, he will mess with your children. And we have a spiritual responsibility as a dad, as a father, to stop him from raining and flooding in our homes. That's the danger. That's the danger. In Hebrews, uh, the Bible, let me share something with you. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 25, 27, just a few uh, scriptures over. Just put this in your margin. Hebrews 12, 25, 27. The Bible says, now listen, see that you do not reject the one, that's a capital O and E, do not reject the one who speaks. For if they did not escape when they rejected him, who warned them on earth, even less, even less will we, if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven. His voice shook the earth at the time, but now he's promised. Yet once more, I will shake. He says, I will shake, not on earth, but also in heaven. In verse 27. Now this expression, yet once more, indicates the removal of what can be shaken, that is, created thing, so that what is not shaken might remain. And the problem today is too many fathers are shaken up. Too many fathers are letting the, <laughs> the, letting the devil flood in their life and it's hurting their homes. It's hurting their homes. And I'll show you that. So in other words, the Bible saying, in this age, in this day and time, anything that can be shaken by Satan will be shaken by Satan. And I'm going to tell you something, dads. I'm going to tell you something, moms. Our world is shaken today because of the devil. I thought that was a good point. I really did. Thank you for saying amen The one person. And we thank God this morning. That verse is a verse of deliverance. But I'm going to tell you what comes before deliverance. Dilemma. What comes before deliverance is dilemma. That's the danger of the flood. Now let's, let's look at the dead. By faith, Noah. Noah was a daddy. Noah was a daddy. Noah was a father. Husband. <laughs> Goofed up sometimes, but what daddy has? Amen. Goofed up. But he listened. He listened to God. <coughs> and dads, I want to tell you something this morning. And remember, when I do this, I know how many is pointing back. But dads, I want to tell us something this morning. This morning, if you don't get anything, I want you to get this. You are standing in between the flood and your family. You're standing in between the flood and your family today if the flood has not already come into your home. That video, uh, Lisa shares a couple videos with me to show you this morning to kind of encourage you and everything. And uh, I picked that video that you showed. She found it, but I just picked it. I said, show this one. This one speaks volumes, and I thought it did. Um, of the two kids that were adopted, Leah and, and, and the other one, who? Levi. Or Lie, whatever how you say it. And, uh, well, it's hot. Um, I went to the National Center, believe it or not, check me out. Uh, I went to the National Center of Fathers. And their website says it's the foundation that tries to get children that are fatherless, get them fathers. And today, Today, there are over 20, now get this, there are over 20 million children today without a father in the home. 20, many, 20 million children today without a father in the home. Now guess what? Those numbers are even more astronomical because today there are children in the home with a father that's in the home but is emotionally absent. You picking up on a putting down? They're emotionally absent. The father is. 20 million children. <clears throat> Did anybody see on social media or the news or whatever of that UPS guy that was going to buy that home and the grill was on fire? Anybody see that? Just me? There's some UPS guy was riding by this house and the grill on the front porch of the house um, had caught on fire. I mean, it was engulfed. It looked like the whole house was on fire, but it was just a grill. But flames were just 
Ford from around that grill. He jumps out of his brown truck. I'm gonna tell you what brown can do for you. Your grill cover catches on fire and get it off your porch. He jumps, the video shows, he jumps out, the, out of his truck, goes on the porch, literally battles, through, and I don't understand why the guy videoing didn't help him. That always bothers me. But anyway, but it shows him, he grabbed that grill and drug it off, I mean, the, literally, the flames were just pouring, and he drug it off the porch out in the yard and saved the whole home. I want to ask you a question. Dads, how many of you in your home have smoke detectors? Dads, how many of you have uh, security systems at your house? How many? Sure, why? Why? Protection. Protection. God forbid your house catch on fire. Just going to ask you a question. You don't have to answer, you don't have to raise your hand. You gonna run out first and make sure you're okay? If your child's in there? I don't think you are. I want to ask you another question, Dads. Say your house is flooded. Are you gonna run outside the house? And your children are in there. And you gonna dry yourself out there to y'all? get good and dry and just watch the flood come into your home and think why well that was close are you going to do that first you're going to get your family aren't you yeah. you're going to get your that's how we're wired that's how we're made God put it in us we're perfectly beautifully made I want to ask you a question you're not putting levies around your home. That's exactly what you're doing. Yeah. And see, here's the problem. While that flood's coming in your house, some of us dads are walking around the house turning more spigots on. Some of us dads are going to the bathtubs and filling them up with water while the flood's coming in. And you walk over to the washing machine and cut it on. That's a little bit more water. Some of us dads are doing that because of what we're allowing in our own. Some of us dads are doing that because of what our children are listening to, what our children are watching, what our children are exposed to. Some of our dads are turning on more spits. You're one of those dads. You're flooding your house if you don't have spiritual legs. You're flooding your house if you don't have an ark. You're flooding your house if you have an ark and you're not getting in it. You're flooding your house if you got an ark and you're not getting in it because you're not listening to God. Noah feared God, so he listened to God. And he got the whole bunch in the ark. Don't be turning on any more speakers. Noah protected his family by faith. What does it say in verse 7? What's the second word I asked you to say? What is it, church? One, two, three. Faith. That was weak. Let's say it again. One, two, three. Faith. faith. By faith, he saved his house. By faith, he saved his house. That's not what I say. That's what the Bible says. By faith. Faith does what? Faith saves. Just going to give you a scripture. Acts 16, 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Faith saves. Faith protects. Did Noah protect his family? Are you protecting your family? Not only does faith protect, it watches over. Did the ark watch over the people? Are you watching over? Are you watching over your family? Do you have spiritual evidence? Faith delivers. Did the ark deliver him? Faith delivers. The faith preserves. Was his family rescued? It preserves. Noah protected his family by faith. Dad, I'm going to tell you right now, it's time to claim your kids to the kingdom. It's time to claim your kids to the kingdom, church. It's time to protect them with your prayer. It's time to fight the devil and live their lives. Dad, it's time for our faith to protect our family. You know why? Watch this. I'm probably just going to... I ain't going to say that shit. Dangerous. The dead. I want to ask you a question. Did Noah know what was coming?
let me rephrase the question. Did no one know the extent of what was coming? Thank you, church. He had no clue of the extent of what was coming. So if you allow me, I'm not going to break my neck. If you allow me, no step in what? Thank you. Without even knowing what was coming. While I was preparing this, I got to thinking about Odell. Now, if you're here today, you don't know who Odell is. That's my my dad. And he's I asked him to be with me this morning, but he's goes to another church. <laughs> I got to think about what has dad taught me? What, what has my dad taught me? And here it goes. It's very, it's very simple, but yet it's powerful. And I'm 42 years old. And it took me to just about the other day to figure it all out. Ladies. You know what my dad taught me? Here it goes, you ready? Always use manners. Can I get a witness? Amen. Always use manners. Didn't know it at the time, but that's what he was doing. The other thing Mr. Odell taught me <coughs> was every decision I made, try to make the right. Can I get a witness? Mm -hmm. And every decision you make, try to make the right. Always use manners, try to make the right decision. And the last, not the last thing, one of the only three things my dad has taught me. And I can, I can tell, I can carry you right now to where we were standing when he looked at me and said these words. Because I was, as the song says, I was deep in sin. And my daddy didn't judge me. But my daddy looked at me he says it's God happy with what you're doing. He said, don't worry about me. He said, it's God happy with what you're doing. <laughs> well played, Dad. <laughs> Can I ask you a question this morning? Dad, is, is God happy with what you're doing? My daddy has worn two hearing aids just about all my life. One, he's with just one, he's deaf. I mean, I'm not being funny. He's deaf. And when they're both out, he's deaf. <laughs> I mean, poor daddy he just has bad hearing. Obviously. I thank God today that even though my, my daddy has bad hearing, he can still hear the voice of God. Because he looked at me and said one day, is God pleased with what you're doing? And ladies and gentlemen, that's what Noah did. Noah had spiritual hearing. Spiritual hearing. He heard the Word of God and he done what God said. If you allow him, if you allow him, he'd be able to lay you around his hand. Not only the dead, not only the danger. Let's look at the deliverance. And I'm closing. Let's look at the deliverance. By faith, if you allow me, please. I just fell in love with this verse. I hope it encourages you. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen yet. No, we didn't have the weather app. He didn't have any of that. But of things <coughs> not seen yet. Move with fear.
prepared an ark for the saving of his house, on which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Noah's faith worked. It not only <coughs> saved him and his family, but it got him placed in the hall of faith. It got him placed, if you allow me, in the will of God. The deliverance. Maybe you're here today and you don't trust God. You don't trust a heavenly Father because you've not had an earthly Father. Now I'm not here today to bless, uh, smoke up your socks. But I want to share something with you. If I just spoke to you, I'll tell you what you do. You just try our heavenly day. Just try. Just try. If you're here today and got a bad taste in your mouth about a heavenly father, because I've heard, well, if there is a God, if He loves people, you can't do that. And I don't have time to explain that. But I do have time to tell you, His way is not our way. Maybe you're here this morning and you realize that you need a spiritual lead around your family. Maybe you need a spiritual lead around you. Maybe you're here this morning, I'll say children, and you realize this morning you've kind of been taking your dad for granted. Maybe you've not spoke to you dad. Maybe it's in a strange relationship. What about healing it today? Well, I've just got a question. If you reach out and nothing's given back in return, what's it hurt? But what if you reach out and there's restoration? See, not only is he a God of love, he's a God of restoration. Maybe you're here this morning and you do not know, you do not have a relationship with our Lord. His name is Jesus. He's not going to make everything rosy. It's not going to be everything just go great. Maybe you're on the very bottom. But as I've been told, you're on the very bottom, there's only one place to look up. There's only one place to look. And that's up. Ladies and gentlemen, that's where our Father is. And this morning, if your palms are sweating, you've got a lump in your throat, and you know, you know that you don't know, if you'll come up here, I'll let you know who I know. You know? Maybe you're here this morning and you just need some time to call. Maybe you just want to thank your dad. Maybe you just want to thank him for the dads in your life. And last but not least, maybe you're here this morning and you're a mom doing a dad's job. God bless you. Maybe you're here this morning and you're dead. Do it a mom's job. God bless you. You need strength. You need endurance. You need peace. You can find it in Christ Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, we just want to say thank you. As Miss Rhonda and Aunt Sue come.